My hander, handle is Ian coincidentally. Um, my email address is also Ian at gmail.com if you care to email me. Um, <coughs> I uh, imported Chicago. <laughs> and that's, thanks for coming. <laughs> More importantly, all I got was this crappy t-shirt. <laughs> I didn't actually get that. That's, I stole that from Etsy. Um, but more seriously, the uh, import of Chicago follows the typical OSN storyline. Where'd my notes go? Crap. Nope. <laughs> I need three screens is the problem. <laughs> nope, that's not gonna work either, sorry. Ah, damn it. <laughs> there it is, yep, I just couldn't find my mouse, okay. Now, how do I get rid of this screen? God damn it. I had this going so good before. Yeah, I, the only thing I can see is this blank presenter screen. There's a little layout button. Yep. Presenter notes. Presenter notes. Got it. So close. Almost there. One more copy paste. Ready? Okay, so typical uh, import timeline storyline is uh, you move to a new city seeking a new job, you're all excited about your new job, and like everybody else, I went and searched for open data as the first thing you do when you move to a new city. Come on, notes. Damn it. I want the notes to go on all the slides, not just this one. Sorry guys, I should have made this better. Um, I had four minutes. I was playing around with a picture. I could have done this. <laughs> so I, um, as, I, as you do, I found uh, the Open Data Portal for Chicago. Um, it turns out that they have a really good one. They have lots and lots of open data. At the time, uh, I think they had something like 360 open data data sets. Um, and they were all on this great portal. Um, one of the first things I searched for was addresses and buildings or something like that. And I found a data set that looked open and free, and to them it was free. Um, to the city of Chicago, it was free. Um, and so I downloaded it, split it apart into little pieces, and um, I had a meetup. I talked to the community members, I messaged individual people, individual mappers, um, and asked them if they, what they thought about that, what they thought about having uh, 550,000 new objects around their area. Everybody was, ex was very excited about it. Um, and so I started to import it. Um, I thought to myself, I had covered the import guidelines. I, um, I had a conversation with the community. I uh, did the conversion thing. I checked the license. And I was doing the correct tagging scheme at the time. And um, I was keeping, I, I created a new account. I was doing all the correct uh, change set size things, um, which were kind of new and esoteric at the time, because this was two years ago. Um, and even though I did all that stuff, uh, I still did it wrong. Um, let's see here. Man, I'm just going to stick with Google Docs next time. Uh, so there was one difference about the way I was doing my import, though. Uh, this import that was happening was 
basically me doing the import while other people watched. Um, and I did that on purpose because um, I knew that other people, they had talked to me, they were not interested in actually doing the import. Um, they were excited to have the data, they were not excited to do the import. Uh, we had spoken personally at meetups and at, at various um, open data events throughout the city. And so that's kind of, I did that uh, on purpose. Uh, I didn't want to burden those people with this onerous work. Um, and um, while, while I was doing that, uh, somebody brought it up. I think Paul found that data and he sent me a very nice note it, and pointed out that I was importing buildings in Chicago, which I was, and uh, that he pointed out the guidelines and um, that we should have a more uh, global discussion about it, which makes sense because um, although I had talked to uh, people inside the community, uh, I did not talk to the global community of OSM. And um, although it's good to talk to the local community, it's also important to realize that OSM is a global data set. And so you need to have input on tagging so that you're not doing something that is completely new uh, in just your area, which actually turns out I did. Um, sorry, my notes are going all over the place here. Um, during the discussion uh, about when I brought this up to the imports mailing list, um, somebody found the actual license, um, which said something like this. The city may require a user of this data to terminate any and all display. So that is a problem because we can't require our users of OSM to remove the data from the data set arbitrarily. They were doing this because they were worried that the that at some point somebody like the LA Times would take the Chicago building data set and the building data set had addresses that were completely wrong and created a, a misrepresentation of what the city was doing or something like that. And so they wanted to be able to say to somebody who was using this data, um, take it down please, we'll give you a corrected version. Um, so the point was that this wasn't supposed to be a uh, we're going to censor you kind of thing. This was a, it was meant as a defense against them screwing up, um, which makes sense, except we can't take in data like that. So um, I stopped the import. I had finished about a, a third of the import of the city. Um, and I uh, also started working at the Obama campaign. And so I got a lot more busy. And um, I was tracking down the open data people at the Chicago, uh, the CTO's office, and I basically harassed them until they switched their license to MIT. Um, <laughs> so one of the results of that, I, I had a meeting with uh, the chief data officer of Chicago, Brett Goldstein. Um, I also, um, I emailed him a few times. His assistant called me uh, and said, yes, we'll get back to you, don't worry. Um, I didn't hear back from them, and so I saw that he was on like an NPR radio show talking about how great open uh, data in Chicago is, and so I called in and said, hey, about that open street map thing. And he was like, yeah, we'll get back to you, don't worry about it. And uh, then like a month later, um, it was like, two weeks before the election and we were crunching on that stuff, he called me and said, let's actually get together and do something about this. And I said, actually, we're kind of busy right now. So um, he, right after the campaign finished, we uh, got together with a guy named Tom Schenk, who uh, kind of took over on the open data stuff uh, when Brett left. And um, we had a meeting and the result of it was that Chicago ended up on GitHub with five or six data sets. They were all released uh, under MIT. And it just so happened that GitHub started doing um, mapping at that time. And so they have a GeoJSON blob on GitHub, 
with uh, things like bike racks and the building data, <coughs> excuse me, and um, other geodata that um, has been stripped of personally identifiable information, basically. Um, so things like the building's data set no longer has the building owner information. Um, it has the address information and all that. Um, so anyway, once that happened, I was able to continue doing the import. Um, it took me another two months or so to finish. Here's what, here's what the northeast-ish corner of downtown Chicago looked like before, and this is what it looked like um, two months later. So I, I kind of glossed over the fact that um, I was doing this myself. The way that this worked was I would divide this up into I divided the whole city up into chunks uh, of approximately 10 square kilometers or so. And um, I would load that chunk of data into JOSM, download the existing OSM data as a separate layer, and then basically merge them by hand. Um, in the vast majority of Chicago, that was incredibly easy because there were no existing buildings, or the buildings that were there were just tracing from Bing, and they didn't have any extra data. So I just deleted those and put the new ones in. <coughs> um, so in the, the only difficult part was in areas like down in the corner there along the river, where there were easily traced buildings that people had actually added addresses to. Um, I don't have a picture of it here, but the, the loop area, the downtown financial district of Chicago, um, had been mapped pretty well by somebody who was an architect and had actually gone through and, and found building height information and stories and all that. So I merged all that data. Um, and the important part is that it took me uh, probably less than three months to do this whole thing, uh, but actual ca calendar time, it took me about a year and a half from starting it to getting caught by DWG to changing the license to finishing the second half of the import. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, so, um, that, but it didn't really finish there. Um, now that the the data is in OSM, it's a whole lot easier for mappers to come around and add data to the map. So things like the those diagonal streets there, those are really strong corridors of commerce and there's a lot of uh, restaurants and a lot of um, businesses along there that um, are a lot easier to map now. So people will go through and see that there's a building, they'll be able to orient themselves really easily see the address on the building and drop a pin with one of the easy uh, POI editors, POI editors, and um, they'll be able to add, they have been able to add data very easily because of that, the building import, along with the addresses. Um, the address data that was attached to the buildings also made it so that this, it, that Chicago is probably almost complete, completely geocodable. Um, there are some exceptions where buildings had building address ranges that got imported as uh, numbers separated by a dash. Um, I still haven't fixed those yet, but it, it, in the vast majority of cases, the, the, the number is one digit away so that the nominatum catches it and it works. Um, and by that I mean if, you, if the range is 100 to 105, um, it will match on 100 and 105 Main Street, whatever, but it won't match on 103 Main Street because that number isn't actually in there. <clears throat> so um, other than those small-ish problems, uh, geocoding is probably mostly a solved problem in Chicago. Wow, that's a pretty strong statement. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, it's easier to geocode in Chicago. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, on top of that, um, the, the open data community in Chicago has gotten a lot stronger uh, outside of OSM too. Um, one of the, the strong features in OSM is that there's a, a group who will uh, do user testing for you. They have, uh, 
Let's see here if I can grab this and drag it over here. Uh, they will do user testing for civic apps. And one of the, the guys I convinced to do it on um, the ID editor and the OpenStreetMap website. So um, if you do a, a search for cut group, Chicago user testing group, um, OpenStreetMap, you'll find a 66 page document down here wow. talking about how they, I was there too. There were, we had 13 people show up in the dead of Chicago winter. It was like negative 20 out. Um, some of these people took transit an hour away to show up and test ID basically for us. And their results are here in this document. Um, there's a lot of information here that we could pull out as uh, OSM developers and improve on things like the website and ID. Um, there's also really well done videos. Um, there's this one woman that I worked with that um, is a tour director for one of the architecture tour boat tours in Chicago and she was going all over the place on the map and exploring it and then she tried to do the edit. So this person is somebody who is extremely knowledgeable and extremely well adept at maps and very comfortable with them. But when I asked her to hit the edit button on a map, she said, why am I going to edit the map? That doesn't make sense to me. So things like that are really awesome that we get that kind of, uh, this is a direct result of me having imported the building data um, and breaking that, that um, bridging the gap between the open data community in Chicago and OpenStreetMap. Um, it opened up a lot of opportunities. Let's see what these other things here. Those aren't as interesting as I thought they'd be. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the, the the Chicago data folks are very excited about it. Um, they oh, that's what I was going to show you. They one of the um, one of the awesome parts about uh, being on GitHub is that they did I spell that right? Yeah. So one of the things that I talked to them. The reasons I talked to them about using GitHub was because of GitHub issues. The goal here is that the issues could become pull requests that fix the data. Like I could take the changes that I made to OSM to their data set when I improved OSM and send it in as a GeoJSON modification to their GeoJSON file and make a pull request. Their engineers could accept that and make their data better. Um, of course, there's some technical issues with that because this building's data set is 1.2 gigabytes of GeoJSON that's compressed as a binary blob on GitHub. So it doesn't technically work, but the idea is there. And um, so to get around that, I filed issues th like um, images don't exist in the examples. That's not a good, like, um, there's buildings that are trimmed. Uh, in weird ways that form uh, weird multi-polygon issues. And so things like that that are in their official data set that some poor woman who I met who keeps this data up to date, um, she has to go through and manually update those. And everybody in the city uses this data set but doesn't know, about, doesn't know that they can go and talk to her to fix the data. And here, I, because they released it and had some eyes looking at it to improve it, that. Uh, they were excited about that. Yeah? In retrospect, would you have still used the JASM workflow, or would you have done some sort of scripting in the areas where there was absolutely no other buildings and you could safely? Um, I may have increased the size of my squares that I broke things up into, just to make that part faster. But I would not have scripted anything else. It, the, the amount of time that you spend writing the script or adapting Paul Norman's script, for example, that he has that does address merges, um, or writing another thing in Ruby or whatever, that 
that all pales in comparison, sorry, other way around. The, the work that you do uploading in Jossum pales in comparison to how much time you'd spend on making a script work, um, at least in my experience. Um, it really depends on how much existing data is there and how well, how busy your, your community is. In Chicago, there is, was a busy community, but it wasn't, the area was so big that it wasn't well mapped in general, and so it just made that process a whole lot easier. Last question? Yeah? Do you have any plans uh, working with, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but uh, keeping the OSM data up to date? As, you, know, you talk about updating the Chicago data, bringing up the Chicago data back in OSM. So the building data set hasn't changed, uh, the Chicago building data set hasn't changed since a long time, uh, for a long time. Um, and so I'm not worried about that very much. They do have a address data set that does change, but they haven't released it. And so I haven't worried about updating OSM from the open data. Um, I would probably not do it anyway. Um, just it, it, it's not a good enough return for your time investment. I would rather spend more time trying to get people to improve OSM. Thanks.